It was semifinal Wednesday at the Iowa State Volleyball Tournament in Cedar Rapids, and boy, was it a busy day for the WQAD Sports Department. Five teams hitting the court tonight or today with a pair of state powers going head to head in 3A. But we'll start in 5A. Pleasant Valley battling defending state champion Ankeny bright and early at 10 a.m. Game one, Cora Ruff catches the Hawkettes sleeping. She goes over in two. Pleasant Valley up 5-3. The Lady Spartans continue to build their lead. Hallie Weiss with the hammer, 24-14 Pleasant Valley. The MAC champs close out game one with the ace from Riley Morgan. They cruise 25-16. Game two, Lady Spartans still bringing the hammer. Aracatro with three straight points to extend the lead to 16-9. Ankeny would fight back. Ava Reynolds gets the point right here. They're tied at 25. Spartans, though, would take game two. Vice finds the right spot on the court. Pleasant Valley wins game two, 32-30. to Ankeny, though, would win game three, but the Lady Spartans come back in game four. Molly Albrecht with the service ace. Pleasant Valley up 16-8. Then on match point, Vice again finding the soft spot in the defense. Pleasant Valley advancing to the state championship match with a 3-1 victory. It's our first time going, but um, we're not done yet. We're still really hungry for that state championship. Ankeny gave us their best game today, and I think our team played really, really well. It means so much. I'm so thankful for this entire team. I'm so proud of everyone. Everyone's been working hard in practice, trying to get us prepared, and it's such a good feeling. Oh, everything. We've been working so hard for that. Um, that's been a goal since the beginning of the season, so to finally get there and then have the chance to bring that trophy home is just great. It's like seeing their growth and, and belief in themselves and their abilities and as a team, it's just been so wonderful to see and be able to coach with them, many of them for three, four years. It's just a blessing. Pleasant Valley will face Cedar Falls in the 5A state, state title game tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. In 4A North Scott, Waverly Shellrock going head to head. High noon showdown. Game one, Lady Lancers playing comeback. Scout Kershey kills with the kill, I should say, right down the middle. Lady Lancers back within just two. Then it's Kershey again late in the game, slamming home to tie it at 22 apiece. But game one would go to the Haw Go Hawks, 25-22. Game two, we're tied once again. El McLaughlin smacks that one down to give the Lady Lancers a 10-9 lead. Later in game two, it's game point. Who better than McLaughlin to seal the deal? Lancers win this one 25-19. We're tied at one game apiece. Game three, Grace Graham perfectly places the kill. Lady Lancers fall, though, in the third set, 25-17. To game four we go, tied at 27. Graham gives the North Scott Lancers a narrow one-point lead, but it was not meant to be on this day. Go Hawks, go the distance, winning it 32-30. They win the match three games to one. There's so many points where they were up by like 31, 30 or something, or like they were just up by one, and we could have easily just let them get that kill and let them go to state, or we could have easily let them swept us even. But we fought so hard, and I'm just so proud. All these girls are my best friends. They all contribute something unique in their own way to this team, and I'm so thankful and grateful for each and every one of them. I'm just so happy it was this team for my senior year. The Lady Lancers close out their season 31 and 5 overall. A pair of local teams going head to head in 3A. Top seed Assumption battling West Liberty after splitting the first two games. Things are tight in game three. Maggie Johnson gets the kill for the Lady Knights. Assumption up 22 17. West Liberty responds. Macy Dolfeld smashes one down the line, cutting the lead 24 19. But Assumption closes out game three. Ava Harris Shepard with the game winner. Lady Knights take game three, take the two games to one lead. Game four, Dolphelt takes over from the back row. The kill, Comets up 22-18. Assumption comes right back though with their own leader, Ava Schubert gets the kill. Lady Knights down just five, but it's West Liberty taking game four behind another cross court kill right here. So we head to game five, tied at two games apiece. In that final game, Sophie Bicey with the block right here. Advantage Comets, they led 5-4. The game close throughout. Carly Rolf serves up the ace. We're tied at 14. Comets, though, go back to their leader, Dolfeld. And boy, did she deliver. The last row record setting 37 kills in the match. West Liberty wins game 5, 16-14. The Comets advancing to the 3A state championship game.
One of the main things, we always wanted to come to the state tournament, but we didn't focus on winning. We focused more on playing together, you know, giving everything we got all the time. Um, to be here is just one of the effects of our mentality and what we do. Well, when we got in the huddle out and the thing, we were just like, we can't give up. Like, we really want to win this. And I feel like we just started believing in ourselves in the fourth set. It was really exciting. Everybody was just happy and fun, and it was a really good moment. You know, if you see the court, you know, we could be losing, and they don't panic. They just play the game. And uh, we had some key moments that we had a freshman at the service line, and she came through. West Liberty will face West Delaware for a 3A state title tomorrow at 2.30. In 1A, reigning state champion West, or Burlington Notre Dame, I should say, looking to return to the state title game once again, hosting Holy Trinity game one. Nike's off to a great start. Abby Horshin with the kill. Notre Dame up early. Game point, Josie Benz doing what she does best. The kill from the back row gives the Nikes game one, 26-24. Game two, Notre Dame playing comeback. It's Benz again from the outside with the nice touch. Deficit down to two. Things close late in game two. Gabby Deary slams home the kill. Nikes take game two as well, 26-24 once again. Game three, Nikes turn up the defense. It's Corson with the block at the net, 25-24. Nikes in front. Then it's Benz delivering the ace serve when her team needs it the most. Nikes win game three, 27-25. They clinch that spot in the title game with a three-set sweep. We were up two sets to zero. I mean, we had nothing to lose. I mean, if we lost that set, so what? We had another one to play. We we're going to battle it back, and we just had to play free. We can't play tense, otherwise it's going to go down in the dirt. So, I mean, we knew we had our backer attacks. That was very powerful, and, I mean, Gabby played great, and the swingers, they knew their job. The defensive knew their position, stay disciplined. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, we knew we could do it, and we proved it to everybody out there. It was a big win and we played tough competition and everybody took care of their responsibilities and took care of what they could control. And then we that put, was put together and we pulled up the win. Back-to-back -back state champions would be amazing, especially since we haven't been to state before that at all. So the first time in history, not only going to the state and winning it, but then getting back-to-back -back champs would be the best. The Nikes take on Springville for a state championship tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Sectional championships on the line in Illinois in 2A Rock Falls battling Rockford Lutheran at the Oregon sectional. We don't have video of that one, so I can tell you that Rock Falls did win that game two games to none. We'll have highlights of that for you tomorrow on Good Morning Quad Cities. And it's Freeport Aquin ending Galena's fantastic run two to nothing. The final in that one. Once again, congratulations to Rock Falls. They head to the super sectionals. They'll play tomorrow with a trip to state on the line. I should say on Friday with a trip to state on the line. That's it for sports. We'll be right back.